Are you totally different when it comes to sex and copulation? Have you judged yourself out of receiving pleasure? Have you judged yourself into receiving pleasure in certain ways and excluded other ways? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, pleasure diva and body whisperer, Milica Yelenich. Whoa, good evening, my sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Yelenich, and tonight we have a very fun show lined up for you. Actually, this show was sent in as a request from one of the one of my dear friends and also an avid listener um, of 180 something shows I have put out. He hasn't. The only one he didn't listen to was one that I fair warned him that you shouldn't um, maybe eat before listening to it because it was the one about um, crotch health for men, and I did talk about some pretty funky things in there. So. Um, Shout out to my sweet friend Dennis for recommending this show and for being so awesome and supporting this show all the time. And also, um, I want to say a shout out to my fabulous guest tonight, who uh, who I am super glad is on my show because in a million years, I never thought that this person would be on my show. So it's pretty fun. Um, and with this topic, I couldn't think of somebody who could possibly be better to talk about this. Um, I'm going to be talking to actually one of um, the superheroes himself, but none of you guys have actually met this superhero because he's sort of in, uh, I would say that he's he's kind of in the shadows right now, like not a lot of people know about him. He's just starting to emerge uh, in the world and uh, his name's actually frugal fire and since he's got the in he's actually got the in on the marvel superheroes because he's been hanging with them like a really long time like most of his life he, he's aware of them and his you know uh, superhero uh his superhero capacities and he's aware of their superhero capacities because i guess that's what uh, Marvel superheroes do is they like know each other and they know strengths and weaknesses. So I thought, who better to have on this show, right, than Frugal Fire himself? And if you guys don't know who he is, you're you're going to you're going to find out today. So I want to welcome you, Frugal Fire, to the show tonight. Um, and I'm really glad you could be on so that we could have this crazy, fabulous discussion about the possibilities of. Uh, different things that could be going on with different superheroes. Like, would the Hulk, if he gets angry in the middle of sex, would he just rip a woman apart? Like, what what would possibly go on? But um, we'd love to hear your voice. So how are you? And welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, kind of uh, excited to talk about this topic. I've uh, joked around with friends about some of these things in the past. And yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of the Marvel Universe and a lot of the heroes in the Marvel Universe. And I guess to kind of answer your question, I suppose um, Bruce Banner was um, not his, you know, it's who he is when he's kind of a human, right? Uh, that's his human form, but if he were to get really angry, I'm sure he would burst out into the Hulk and grow, you know, two, three times his size and destroy whoever. Well, yeah, he signed up sort of as a thing with women, so they tend to calm him down. So I don't know if he would destroy the woman, but yeah, yeah, I'm happy okay. to explore the the options. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. So I remember watching the Hulk as a kid, but I didn't remember the part that women actually calm him down. So that's kind of cool. So he might actually get turned on and then turn out of the Hulk rather than getting turned on and then getting angry and and like ripping her apart. I think certain so women could tame the beast, so to speak, the beast within him. <laughs> That's awesome. So are there any Marvel heroes that you can think of that might actually be like super violent when it comes to being a lover? Like if there was one superhero you would definitely not want to have sex with, whether you were a man or a woman, like who do you think would be like the most violent uh, possibly out there? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, uh, quite a few heroes have tempers. There's some villains that have 
some tenders, but I guess on the hero side, probably um, in the Marvel Universe, Wolverine. Um, he's pretty ferocious and has some animal instincts in him, so I feel like uh, he'd be one who you wouldn't really want to tangle with, especially since his claws tend to pop out when he uh, you know, gets a little excited. Yes, we yeah. did have a fun, have a fun conversation. conversation. Oh, I'm like hearing myself in echo right now, so that's interesting. Um, so this afternoon we were kind of chatting um, up when uh, earlier, and there was a conversation that came up from somebody else who said, hey, Wolverine would be kind of fun. And you were like, Wolverine, he's got claws. But I guess for some women, Wolverine might be fun, even though, yes, uh, when you think about that, you think, holy cow, that would be like being stabbed by 10 knives inside your body could be dangerous unless you've got some super mega powers to heal yourself. I'm thinking that might not be fun. And then I also think about like, what would Wolverine do for self-stimulation? Would What would occur? Like, would he end up lopping off his own penis? Like, what would happen? definitely a possibility i mean if he's into that i think two marvel characters like wolverine and, and lady deathstrike which she has also has the instant healing abilities essentially she's like uh you know the female version of wolverine i think the two of them together could get up to a lot of you know bdsm type activities uh, given they could each stab each other and heal pretty much instantly so you could get some pretty raunchy things i think and have no consequence and when there's no consequence you know where's the boundary yeah, that's pretty intense. So, um, what's her name again? Lady, uh, Lady, Lady Death something Strike. rather. In the movie, Lady yeah, they, Death she Strike. comes in for a little bit. That's awesome. I think that's a pretty superlicious capacity to have. If your body can heal instantly, uh, pretty or fairly instantly, um, you could you could have some pretty intense like with BSM there's stuff that they call like hot and cold play as well like you could get to some pretty intense hot and cold play if you're if you can heal instantly you could have uh like sex over hot coals if you wanted which would be like something that the average person can't actually do and survive or you could have sex in like a cold locker you know, and if you're really into, like, say, beef, you could have sex in a cold locker with beef hanging around you for fun, and <laughs> you would be okay because you're not going to freeze. Or does she still freeze, or she just heals? It's a good question. Um, yeah, I suppose at a certain point they would just freeze, but they wouldn't die. They would continue to heal. Um, so as, like, cool. cells would die, new ones would regenerate, I suppose. But if it's cold enough, they would just be frozen and then when they unthawed they'd be fine so does lady death strike also have like like how wolverine has like the the sort of like the blades on his fingers does she also have blades as well yeah out of, out of her fingers they're like probably seven inch um thin blades coming out all five fingers wow. on each each hand coated wow adamantium, so between so. what is adamantium is this like a it's special like, this like super strong metal essentially um very very hard to break can cut through you know other metals and things like that Mm. so if you've got a woman who for one okay again the whole like self-pleasuring thing i just completely wonder or do they even have to do that because like they're superheroes and maybe their bodies are just always feeling turned on because they're just active like their energies are so active that they don't actually have to self-stimulate because they're just always turned on or if they are self-stimulating and they're kind of you know she she could actually be masturbating whether she's stroking the clit or fingering herself that could get dangerous but then she self-heals which is both fascinating and scary at the same time like i personally am thinking if i'm if I'm masturbating, not that you ever wanted to have that image in your head, I'm so sorry. But if I was, <laughs> um, let's just say, and and I'm like chopping up my own genitals, uh, I'm thinking that, I don't know if I would, that would be such a fun thing. But then again, you're healing instantaneously. So well, they have, there's a feeling of, 
of everything, right? So they, they would feel the pain. It still hurts, the same as if you were to do it to yourself without a healing factor. It's just that it would heal. So uh, unless you're really into that kind of pain, um, you know, I think you might even faint from the pain and then wake up completely healed, right? Um, True. Yeah, I don't know. She can retract the claws. They can both retract the, the claws, right? So, okay. I, I mean, I'd probably just retract them if I were them. And maybe yes. they're into that a little bit of that kinky stuff, like a little bit of scratching or something. You, you have that ability. <laughs> and your you nails could, are never going to break. Like that. Sort no, of yeah, cool. they would. They wouldn't break very easily. Um, they'd be very, very hard to break. So, yeah, I, I like to think of like, in a, from a fantasy perspective, I think it'd be kind of interesting to imagine this this female as you know, uh, being a virgin, right? Having the healing power of, of returning back to their original state, right? Theoretically, she would be a virgin when she attained those powers, so she would heal back so to being true. a virgin. So that's something that that you could explore that option, right? And and if you explored, you know, different things with that, then uh, that might be something that that people would find interesting with a Marvel superhero like Lady Deathstrike. Yeah, forever virgin, fascinating, and that yet she could still gain experience because she can still you know she would maintain and retain her information from experience but she's forever walking around like a virgin like i i sell lotions that is called like a virgin and i don't know that i mean it lasts a little while but it's not going to give you the forever healing effect of being like a virgin like lady deathstrike could have so now that's that could be fascinating. There could be some money in there because I don't know if you've noticed this, but there are people that have been selling their virginity on the internet and she could be like legit. Like she's just selling it over and over and over again. She could break in some serious money for selling the virginity. I'm thinking if I was Lady Deathstrike, that's what I would do. Like That sounds like good business to me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, it's an, I want an to, option. Uh, yeah, take advantage of that and you could do other things as well to them, and, and they would just heal. So it would be like a fresh palate each time. They would not be used at all. Right. So like anal penetration, and it's like you could have anal rips. It's okay. They're going to be healed. It's going to be fine. That's and right. you would never get you would never get like hemorrhoids from like excessive anal penetration that hasn't been lubricated. You would just be like, hey, I'm fine. It's all good. That's right. It would just be a few moments of pain, and then they would be done, and – she would heal. It's pretty sweet. So what are some, <laughs> I, I mean, wow, that, that can be that in itself, just the superpower to heal. I mean, I, I do healing work as a living, but it's not as extreme as the Marvel superheroes, although I wonder what it would be like to be able to be that kind of extreme. I like that. I just like the thought of being able to have that kind of crazy uh, intense capacity to do that and to like retract your fingernails is pretty sweet too because I can't stand having long fingernails so if I could just pull them back when I want and let them out when I want that would be great I think if you could have retractable boobs too it would be awesome like your boobs could grow out to like double D when you want to like show it off and you want to show off cleavage and then say you're running and you want to bring your boobs back in like you could have retract if I was a superhero okay. I would want like retractable body parts that could do you know guys too right like they're running and they might not want to be flopping so they could like retract the penis from the flop and then when they aren't running they could just let it go i think there's a lot of bonuses to like retractable body parts in itself something to consider wondering how what could what would it take to have retractable and like inflatable and retractable body parts it could be so fun. Why isn't this a product for men? Why aren't there Why aren't there currently boxer briefs that have ice, icy cooling patches that cause instant retraction and then it warming? Could be, right. Or, <laughs> there's a business opportunity for you. Okay, we're making. You want to go for later. a run? <laughs> put on put on icy <laughs> underwear. <laughs> ice Shrink. Fire. <laughs> yeah, it could totally work. Everybody could be their own superhero then. So how do we get that product out for women that they could retract? Like if you could get boob implants that actually like you pump it up, pump it up, pump it up um, to the size you want and then you deflate. It's like a balloon, right? But it's air. It's air boobies, not like silicone boobies. I think there'd be some cash in that. 
I don't, you'd have to have like there a little go. button on the side, right? Like press it in and like, or maybe your nipple, right? You press your nipple in and the air fills it up. And then it detracts and infl- deflates and inflates. I think that would be, there's, I bet you after the show that probably give it six months and there's going to be a product on the market that's going to be uh, like boob implants that are, you know, fill them up and bring them down. Because the last time I came up with something and mentioned it, it was about six months later that I found it on the internet that it was a brand new product. So that could be that could be coming out. So we're actually going to, and I don't know where the last 15 minutes went, but they flew. And we're going to actually head to break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about marvelous sex after this commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melita Yelenich, and tonight I have a very special guest called Frugal Fire. He's one of the, he's actually a Marvel superhero, but he's so in the shadows that people haven't heard of him yet. Um, in fact, he only heard of himself today. So that's how new he is in the world. Although he is familiar with the Marvel world, he's just new to revealing that he's part of it because it's new to him that he's part of it too. So uh, welcome, Frugal Fire. And I'm just wondering, um, to you, I was wondering, like, if, of all the characters, too, who do you think would be the absolute crappiest as as a, like, a lover? Like, who would put, like, the total damper on things? Like, they just might be so self-absorbed, so, like, into themselves that they couldn't even connect with somebody else. Or maybe they have, like, you know, like, I would think, like, I don't know if it's Marvel, because I don't know the difference. I really don't. Is it, I, I don't know which character it is, but it's like a lizard-like creature. And I think, I don't think that I would be having fun with like a lizard-type creature. I think that would be a downer. But what kind of character would you think would be like the worst lover out there? Yeah, I suppose someone who's self-absorbed, right, would, would uh, probably not be a very good giver when it comes to being a lover, right? That's probably something that's that's valued. Um yeah, I, I can think of a few villains. Probably there are probably quite a few villains that wouldn't make very good, um, very good lovers in the the Marvel universe. Think of any any of like even Spider Man's um, potential. I think the lizard guy is the guy you're talking about from from Spider Man, right? Um, yeah, I think so. From like yeah, the 1970s be... comics of Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, no, I don't think he would be very good uh, <laughs> just because they're self-absorbed, right? Their goal is, like, to destroy society or they have some some evil revenge plot, right? And I don't know. Maybe if you're you're into that kind of thing, then, then that could work for you. But for the average lover, I don't think that it would work very well. <laughs> no, plus I think this, the, you know, as a lizard, he's kind of cold-blooded. There wouldn't be, like, a lot of warmth to the whole thing. I think, too, the scales... Um, like rubbing on my skin probably would be agitating. Like just, they just wouldn't be pleasant. So in that way, it's like if I look at that, Although that I think tail. it would be, well, that tail could be fun. And maybe that, well, yeah, like it's got a little tail, bit like you know? whip action, right? Yeah. It could be, yeah, again, you'd have to kind of be into like some BDSM for that, but there's some potential there for sure. So, and and I wonder too, like there's, if you were, here's a really crazy question. You're going to love this question because I didn't, the only thing that we really talked about before was like an idea of how we could like incorporate superheroes into this, but I didn't actually ask my guests any of these questions before. So I'm, I might be throwing them for a bit of a loop, but they just come up as they come up. Frugal fire, this is how it goes. If you could have an orgy with any superheroes and you didn't have a point of view if you were gay or straight or bisexual, who would you have an orgy with? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, oh, oh, and in the orgy, you get their superpowers. Because as soon as you have sex with them, your superpower is to gain their superpowers. They don't lose it, oh, but wow. you, like, gain them. Yeah. That changes everything. Okay. Um, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think Rogue from, from the X-Men in the Marvel Universe. Um she has some telekine- telekinetic abilities, so she could theoretically make you think something that, or anything really, um, they could really kind of plant ideas right in your head kind of thing. So I like the telekinetic ability. Definitely got to have Wolverine in there. I mean, I, I'm not gay myself, but he's just a ripped guy that would just be, it'd be cool to have him there and get his healing power. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's true, so. right? And you would gain his healing power out of that, so that would be fun. And yeah, retractable and nails mean, for possible other fun, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, he's kind of that, that rough guy that you just want to have there. Um, as you Maybe even like a bodyguard in case someone comes in or something. Um, who else is, would be good? You know, I think Tony Stark would be a good one. So he's Iron Man. Um, despite mm-hmm. having no superpower at all, um, his power is that he's a billionaire and he's intelligent. Um, so he has no superpower. He's actually human similar to like a Batman, but Batman's DC, not Marvel. Um, so in the Marvel right. Universe, Tony Stark would be cool because I think if he was in the room, um, a lot of his, I like some of his banter and things like that. Um, and I think he'd be good to have in the room just because he's a really smart, rich guy. So he could protect you from a liability <laughs> standpoint. If anything were to happen. True. <laughs> You've involved a billionaire, one of the richest men. So um, you're kind of safe there, right, to, to have him in the room. As long as he's part of it, you know, you're not nothing bad's gonna happen. He's probably gonna take care of it. True. Um, so that's a good one. To and then you get to have his superhero abilities of money too. Like you'll just bring the money in. It's just that's part of because you're gaining it. That's right. right. He's just there. Anything we want in yeah. the fantasy, I mean, he can purchase it. So if we want fifty right. virgins there. That's not a problem. <laughs> um. We just call up our favorite <laughs> Muslim friends. So. I, my best friend is Muslim, and she even jokes about the Muslim thing. She's like, oh, please, it's nowhere in the Quran. But still, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty That funny. was the reference I, like, I made, too. I'd like to pick up on that. It was good. Um, so, what else would we have in this room? I so guess Lady, Lady Deathstrike. Deathstrike. Yeah. I mean, she, she heals, too, and you, she could just be the virgin over and over again. Just have to bring her in and do her 50 times, and you've got your 50 virgins, right? That's right. That's pretty sweet. So that's four. <laughs> An orgy is five, so I need you to find more. Oh, I need still someone more. Um, well, hmm. I guess you count as five, right? Frugal Fire, you'd be number five. Uh, so you had your four, and then you... But you could have more. An orgy is five or more. So you have more if you like. I like Black what Widow. What a gift, right? Uh, Black, Black Widow, Widow, tell me is, about her. In the movies, she's played by uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, okay, definitely got that. You, I don't know if you just because of that, right? <laughs> exactly. I, I, yeah, I, we, we would have her there. <laughs> yeah. 
would that would have to be there. She's very flexible. <laughs> so you can think of some possibilities there. Oh, that's and awesome. Russian, so she, could use she some, would be some like. Accent. Oh, nice. That's kind of fun, just playing with other accents. And then you got the flexibility factors. So she could be like the tantra queen, essentially. She can do any position you can imagine. That is oh, anything. pretty. That is sweet. Like she could turn herself into uh, like a pretzel shape or uh, whatever, like spread her legs from she one side of the room to the upside other. Upside down with her legs around you. And yeah, no, she's very fit and flexible. So yeah, you'd be fine. I could understand how people could just geek out on fantasies about Marvel heroes because that right there was like, wow, that's a pretty sweet idea. I like that. Just like hanging from and whole, like just the whole idea that you could just put your body in any position um, and it's easy for your body to just go anywhere. So you could like hang for, like, like with one hand off of a tree and then spread him out. Like she also got like like flexibility in the way that her body stretches. Like from like who was that guy? There was like a character at one point who's like maybe that was DC, but his his body parts could stretch. Maybe that was DC um, Comics. I'm yeah, not from sure. the, from the Fantastic Four, you're thinking. Um, right. That, I I don't know if that's in the Marvel universe. Let me think here. Um, I actually don't know if that's in the Marvel Universe or not. But that's the Fantastic cool. so Four maybe you're thing, right? Yeah, we'd bring in the... Yes, yes, that is what I'm referencing. So that's who we'd, we would have to bring in some other characters from the DC Comics just for fun. Um, I know that sounds sacrilege, but sometimes you just have to open your universe to other people to add um, just more depth and more interest, right? So... Just for that sake, we'll bring in the one who can, like, stretch from everywhere because that would just be fun to watch. Like, if you had that, you could stretch your penis as far as you wanted. You could have, like, a 22-foot-long penis if you wanted because you can stretch any body part, right? Yeah, you could. Now, yeah, I mean, something. it might be a little flimsy, but right, it might, might be, not be so, so might rigid, not. but... <laughs> that you could stretch it and then you could move it around. You can like, you could wrap a penis around somebody and then just be like, instead of, you know, I, I just, my brain just went in the weirdest direction, but I could just like see it like wrapped around and then wrapped around and then like it could be inserted anywhere. But then you've also, you could just be hugging it. Like you could just hug the giant penis that's wrapped around you and it'd just be kind of like a, like a cozy, comfy It'd just be kind of sweet. It would actually be really weird, but really sweet. It'd be like a giant snake, actually, but fun. Like <laughs> so a giant our producer snake. in the background. It's fun. Yeah, like a giant snake, right? <laughs> just like wrapped around you, like a constrictor kind of squeezing you a little bit, but not to death. And and just like it could just go anywhere because the penis turns is now stretchable. That- Turns out the Fantastic Four is from the Marvel publishers in the comic books, so it is a Marvel. Oh. It is in the the Stanley world. Oh wow! So we can include the stretch person. We definitely can. I think I, love I think that. he's Mister Fantastic, but I I can't remember for sure. I'd have to I'd have to look that oh, up. Oh, we'd have to double check I that, but he really guy. should be Mister Fantastic. <laughs> just like <laughs> that would just make sense. Every woman would be like, "Yeah, he's fantastic." <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Just stretch his arms around the whole. You could stretch his fingers around the whole room, and and his fingers, That's right. his, all ten fingers, could really, you know, think of the orga- think of the not just the orgasms, but the the orgies that that Mister Fantastic could have. Maybe he needs to be in that room. He definitely needs to be in that room, because he could be sticking his fingers in everybody. I mean, he could be tickling prostates and tickling the JJs at the same time. He could be. He could be doing the pink and the stink at the same time, no problem. Like he's got, no, he's got talent. I, I have like doing like a little love thing. affair with him. Right, now. that's right. <laughs> Whatever's required, he could do it. But he could probably fold his fingers too because they'd be so stretchy. He could fold them so it would feel like two in the pink, one in the stink, and he could just do one finger, kind of like, you know, when you get um, uh like a pipe cleaner, and you can, like, twist it. 
and then you can leave a little space and twist it again. So like one finger itself could be two in the pink, one in the sink. Right? Yeah. Now that's point. good. That's that's far beyond creative right there. <laughs> the producers I know, um, thank God my producer is my friend and she understands that I'm a little whack because she's in the in the chat room right now saying, Stretch does the pink and the stink. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> so Yes, yes, they did hear it here. <laughs> it's something that you don't always consider that you might hear on the radio show. And my uh, friend and CEO of the station, um, she may be listening right now, too, so don't need me us getting overly kicked off the air right now, but it's too fun. So um, from from also in the chat room, too. So there's a chat room on our show that we can watch the comments coming through, and the oh, comments cool. is, who can who can add? Who can I add to my orgy today that would rock my world right away? And I'm wondering who out there, if you are listening and you would like to join in on this crazy, tastic conversation, and you're like, "Oh, I got ideas," just call us up because we actually have phone numbers that you can call. And people are shy about that on my show, and I usually just get private emails and messages after. But that's cool. If you are listening live, you can call in in the U.S. one eight one five eight eight zero eight two five five, and in Canada, one six one three eight hundred eighty seven thirty six. And feel free to join in in this wacky conversation. I would love to hear who would you like to have in your marvelous sex orgy because I think it could be fun to just how many fun people could you add to your sex orgy, especially when uh, who your capacity. Um, is to be able to pick up the capacities of everybody that you're having sex with. So your superhero quality is that you get to absorb other qualities. And they don't lose theirs. You just get to gain lots more. So that's the superhero quality I would like to have, is that everybody I have sex with, I get to get their superhero qualities too. So that's what I'm going to create myself as. That's the superhero I'm going to be for today. So... Um, we're actually going to head to break, guys, and when we come back, we're going to discuss more strange and interesting topics when it comes to marvelous sex after this break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Amelia Tsialanich, and tonight we are talking about marvelous sex with my special guest, Frugal Fire, who has many special superhero capacities. If you'd like to tell our audience about um, Frugal Fire uh, as the superhero character, not not your day job, not your day name. We we're just talking about Marvel hero comic names right now. So, Tell us a little bit about your superhero uh, capacities there, Frugal Fire. <laughs> I have an uncanny ability to pinch the pennies. I am super frugal, and I have that ability to essentially unlock financial independence and early retirement for myself and for others. So I can 
put that power on other people too and help them unlock financial independence and be retired in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. That's my superpower. I love it. So FIRE actually stands for Financial Independence Retiring Early, which is also very fiery. It's awesome and totally badass and knowing how to uh, – knowing how to manipulate your reality with money so that you can have total abundance is I think a superpower that a lot of people uh, would like to have, but you actually do have that superpower in real life, which is, it's not just like a, a joke superpower. It's actually a superpower that this person actually does have. Thus he is a superhero. So frugal fire, being able to know where to put the money, where to invest, and how to make money grow, even if you think it's pinching pennies one one penny at a time, you it's actually you actually do so much more than that, which is so funny. So uh, it is really badass. And um, so yeah, so how much fun? You know, if if you're thinking about, have you ever thought about like what what kind of superhero powers? are not out there yet. Like if there was a superhero that has yet to be um, found or created or seen, um, you know, what, what would those superpowers be that you would, you know, like to see show up that, that then how much fun would it be to have sex with that person with those superhero powers? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, uh, Hmm. There are, like in the comics, some superheroes you haven't seen in the Marvel movie kind of like realm. Um, I think the two most, like at least the most powerful in my mind, is the ability to, there's like three, right? One, I think like the ability to control time is pretty pretty sweet. Mm. Um, think of like in, in the new Avengers movie, they have um, on Thanos' uh, gauntlet, there are like the different... Um, stones and you know each one having different powers like being able to control the reality right being able to have someone picture you as whatever you want right you you can basically warp reality but I think the ultimate superpower and this one rules everything and you know I've had great debates with friends about you know if you could pick any superpower and I'm going to ask you this question next if you could have any superpower what would it be and why and I think it would definitely be the ability to will atoms um, so you, you can basically create oh, yeah. anything. you create earth you create people you can also, again, will atoms away. So if you don't like something, just get rid of it. Right? If someone has a tumor, boom, it's gone. If you don't like this person, boom, they're gone. You can just will atoms, whoever you'd like. So that would be the power that I would choose. What would you choose and why? I'm actually working on that superpower for real. Like, truly, that's actually something that I'm working towards in my real life is to be able to, like, manipulate and communicate with atoms. So I think that's really funny that you say that because that is something that I have like been working towards for years. Um, and the more I'm aware of it, the more I'm aware that we actually do communicate with uh, everything has consciousness and we can actually talk to everything and, and you can actually get things to change and move. And and so I'm, I've been playing with that a lot, wondering how I can ramp up that superpower that I have. Like we all have superpowers for real. And and it's just a matter of acknowledging them, right? So for me, it's like if I could, if I can just ramp that up more, you know. Sometimes I do it with work in different ways that I do work, but I'm essentially playing with molecules and atoms and um, seeing what I can create with that. But the other one that I would want is the one that I mentioned: is to be able to, um, whoever I have sex with, take on their superpowers. Because I've been kind of slutty cool. in my life, so I I would like that. Yeah. And then I would just gather superpowers. So let's say if you, if whoever that's like the power uh, rogue. Sex that's the power rogue has an X Men. She can oh, take cool. the power of the mutant that that she's with. Like she just touches them and she gets that's the power. That's cool. But time. I wouldn't. Yeah, they don't lose theirs. Is what I would want. Like I wouldn't want them to have to lose theirs. I would just like to gain theirs as well. So then I would have like I would no. add to mine, and they don't lose anything. So. That would be really cool to me. And then, I yeah, so if I met somebody with, like, the ability to morph and shift atoms, then I would just, I'd be right on that, like, white on rice. And I definitely use a superpower that I gained at some point that would be 
um, like my friend who is a producer, she's the tenacious minx, and she can actually, she does in real life, she actually has this crazy superpower to, um, to, uh, to seduce things into reality, like she's a seducer. And so I would like to use her seductive powers um, to be able to seduce somebody and to seduce the other people into choosing to actually have sex with me so I could take on, so I could also have their superpowers. So for, I would want to have sex with Rhonda so that I could have her seducing powers so I could seduce everybody else into having. So I love Rhonda, that. if you're cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> I love you have to seduce, you have to get them into bed and take their power. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That would be so fun for me. (laughs) And then they would keep it, but I would have extra. And I would like just build the roster of superpowers. So then it would be like, I could just be there, say one minute, I I would need to um, have the superpower to make water stop or something. But if you have the ability to will atoms, you could make water stop, right? So... You could do, you could do anything, literally really. anything. Yeah, exactly. So um, I would, yeah, I would probably go for seducer, and then I would seduce the person who could will atoms, because then you can heal as well, and uh, and then you could you could actualize, like you could bring things into your life super fast. Some people call it manifesting. I just call it actualizing. So you could bring anything into reality if you can will atoms, right? So. I would go seduction to seduce that person because I feel that person would have a lot of um, resistance to me taking or being able to take on their capacity because I would think that if you had the ability to will atoms, that's something that you would kind of want to be solo on. Like you wouldn't necessarily want more than one person in the world being able to do that because your will then might clash with their will. So there would have to be like a symbiotic relationship between the two people who can will atoms or we would be clashing constantly, right? So I would want to uh I would want to kind of be in harmony with that person. So I'd have to seduce them so they actually like me. How do you uh totally a question for you. How there. do you Yeah How do you how do you uh seduce a robot? Like in the Marvel universe, like Ultron or Vision who are who are not human. They're they're robotic. So they would have no desire for for sex. How do you take their power? That's a really know. great question. So would I have to seduce those they're, guys? They're Android, or could right? I so just, they would be Yeah. Could I just download their information? Could I just like, you know they might not have a desire. Any, anything for sex, possible, but they I might, think. I wonder if I could just then take on the whole, like the superpower to, so they might not be seduced, but then I might require, a, for example, a, a superpower that could, um, like the telekinetic one, right? Which even though it sends thoughts, it could also send programming. I could retrain a program in a robot to actually desire sex. So then I could take that on and then take on their superpowers. There you go. Plant plant a little virus and That's, something that... They would have right, them desiring yeah. to to somehow copulate. Yeah, Robotic. even though they didn't even think that they would want to. Right, yeah. And then they just receive, I would just receive their information that way, like a download, essentially, right? And then it's just like goes into my electrical upload, hard drive. And then upload, I become somewhat Android. Yeah. Yeah, I would just upload it they, like an they Android. They would download and into you, and, and you would upload that. Yeah, exactly. It would be great kind of sexual they would they would download into you and you would upload that yeah. there'd be a whole bunch of, of, exactly. of data dumping they would data dump lots of data dumping receive. streaming yeah there'd be a lot of stuff streaming and it would be good we don't want to blow any hard drives though so we'd be okay though it's going to be it's going to be a good situation i think and i think when it comes down to robots too you you wouldn't want to be um you wouldn't want to squirt on a robot because you could actually like take them out, right? Like it might, unless they're made of some super stuff where they you don't get affected by them. moisture. You, you surge, surge yeah. protectors, surge protection. There you go. Yeah, I probably would have to. Yeah, something like that for sure, because I'd be kind of concerned that that might yeah, just kill the robot. And that's not, I'm not really interested in killing them. I would just like extra more powers. That would be crap, right? You're just 
here you are having fun and bam, all these like, then you smell the smoke of the, the robot being fried. Insane. Insane. Not fun. So, these so if you could will can, any. But... <laughs> exactly. They could, right? So if you could will anything into reality, like if you had the capacity um, to to manipulate molecules in any way, and what would you will into reality that you don't have in your reality right now? Hmm. I don't know. If I, I, I guess I would... Uh... At that point, money isn't even a thing, right? Like, money is a currency to obtain and transact between things, and it's, you know, it's like a superpower in that, like, you know, my current superpower evolves around trying to you know, help people master that. But if I had the ability to will mm-hmm. atoms, money would be a non non thing. You could help as many people as you wanted, or you could build anything. Right now, um, hmm, I suppose it'd be fun just to try out some new experiences, right? If I could will Adams, I would just have some fun. I would do some some traveling, build a giant house just for the fun of it, and then and then realize it was too much work to clean it. So then I have to will a maid in or a few maids in to clean it, and then I'd be hungry. So I'd will in someone to cook me some food. Yeah, I suppose we would just enjoy our life. <laughs> or could you just will the food to be cooked and then it's there, and like just will the house to never get dirty? It's hard to you say. Could. Yes, as I soon think as any that of that happens, possible, you just right? will, will it away. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't even have, like, those, then all of a sudden you don't actually have any problems to solve. So if you had no problems to solve, what would you choose? Who would you be? I think, you know, this line of thought ends up being very bleak and sad, potentially, right? If, if you know, you might even want to will the universe if away you had no problems because you're lonely to solve. and there's no point. <laughs> How do you connect with, with people? How do you connect with beings that are so beneath you that they... You know, they, they're struggling over life problems, like trying to earn a few bucks, and you're like, I can will this entire universe away and snap my fingers. You know, I can end world hunger like yeah. that. I can I can have instant pleasure whenever I want, and so now I have no desire to have pleasure because I can in, I can will it whenever I want. So I've lost attraction to, to copulate with people and, and have social connection because I can will it whenever I want. It's kind of sad, actually. Maybe this power is actually the weakness is that you can never be fulfilled because you can have everything. That's sad. Interesting. Maybe I'll that power Do you think it's true? (laughs) So is it more fun (laughs) to feel like there are things that are not attainable then? Because then you could will that into existence, to have it so that there were things that you wouldn't be able to attain, so that you could always have a struggle that would make you feel turned on enough to keep living. Yeah. The problem is if you have that power, you know you can always just take it away again. You could. God, no fun. But if you really enjoy the struggle, <laughs> right? If you really enjoy the struggle, you might just maintain it. Because there's a lot of people who like struggle. They don't actually are not actually looking for something to be easy in life. They kind of get off on the idea that everything's hard, and they like saying like it's hard to make money, it's hard to live, blah 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 blah. Right? Like their whole way of thinking is that life is hard. And Humans one of the things growth. that I see on this they show, do. they do, yeah. And they take growth to be painful. So you can still allow them to have the pain of growth because they still enjoy it somehow. They get off on it. Um, So, yeah, that's one. And I guess the people who would like to not have that, you could will that away individually for people uh, where then, then whatever their reality is, they can have, right? So you could be able to contribute to everybody and like you would like a reality of struggle, you can have it. You would like a reality of ease, you can have it. Um, And then, so your basically job as God essentially would be to, uh, to maintain, uh, maintain people's desires. Because essentially, it's a lot of work though. It is a lot of work. So what else would be fun to have as a superpower if it wasn't, I don't know if I would want to be responsible for everybody's uh, choices, no. I would rather have um, just have the ability to know that I could manipulate molecules and say, like you were saying, like if somebody had a cancer tumor, I could just go, you're gone, and it's gone. But I don't know that I would need it in the extreme so that, yeah, go ahead. 
I have this fantasy. I've always had this fantasy of having the power to heal. Um, I think instantaneous healing. Yeah. You know, the, the fear being that someone would lock you up and test you, right, and lock you at the center of the earth so you couldn't escape and you could just forever heal. But if no one knew about your power to heal, I think being able to heal, you'd be you'd live for infinity. You could never, you could never really die, and you'd be able to heal from anything. So you could do whatever you wanted. You could jump off a building if you just decided that was something you wanted to do. You could, you know go get ripped at gym and your muscles would heal and you'd be stronger um yeah so that's kind of kind of a cool thing i think is the healing factor and sort of immortality in the sense yes. that you can also monetize that too if you wanted to because if you got cancer you got anything you could just heal so your blood would be super valuable it would be and then if you could just heal and you might also be able to pass that on to other people's bodies too you could heal them. It could be monetized. It could be even something that's, um, you know, like you could eliminate a lot of the struggle in hospitals. You just walk by and you're like, okay, hey, this is done. Would you like to get rid of your cancer? Cool, it's gone. Would you like to die from cancer? Cool, you can keep it. The funny thing is, is a lot of people actually don't want to heal. They actually like, they actually truly do like the pain and the struggle and the disease when you start to ask them and they're like, hey, what do you love about cancer? They're like, I get to die and be with my grandma. Oh, cool. If that's what you had to choose to to feel like you're going to be with your grandma, then that's cool. Um, but it's funny when you actually start to have conversations with people about their choice, about their health, um, people actually choose disease over ease a lot. Um, so having the capacity to heal for you might be super fun. And for other people, they actually really like the struggle, which is funny so then you could just present the option to them would you like to heal instantaneously or no it's your choice and then presenting people with the option and the choice to me that's really exciting like i would be able to walk around and give people total freedom of choice for instantaneous healing it would be so cool yeah i think i think being so able to experience that, pain yeah. too is good that's key being able to experience the pain if you want to it can give awareness yeah yeah, if you want to, yeah. It's like, oh, what does it feel like to break your foot? Oh, that's interesting, and now I can change it. Could be pretty fun. God mode. And I have seen, like, yeah, it is kind of like God mode. And we do have, it's the weirdest thing, is that we actually have within us the capacity to do all of these things that we talk about Marvel Hero Comics doing, Um we do have those those things are available on the planet we've just limited ourselves to believe that we can't right so once we once it's kind of like if you saw the movie lucy it's like when lucy really got into her 100 percent brain capacity function she could do anything and we haven't accessed like so much of our brain um and we haven't really tapped into who we could be and what we could be um, and when we do, I really wonder what the world's going to be like when we, all of us start to function as the superheroes we were born to be, that are possible, that um, we make look like fantasy, but might actually be a possible reality if we allow ourselves to play with things that are way outside the box, way outside of science, way outside of anything that we kind of... Um, decided was you know if we're like oh that's impossible but it's cool um, but it's all these things that you know like the billionaire and the this and the that those things exist on this planet we just make them separate from us so what if we didn't make them separate i think it would be so cool we have about 30 seconds to the end of the show and i want to just say thank you so much for being on um this is a very interesting conversation to have with you on the air uh frugal fire i want to thank you for that and if you have um any last words we've got about 15 seconds to go so go for it sure um if you guys want to change your life and unlock financial independence and retire early uh spend less earn more and maximize your returns those are the three levers you have to play with that's pretty awesome from Google Fire himself. 
Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melissa Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.